Hey, y'all. That's our um, social media handle, um, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and probably TikTok. In this stream, we're going to talk about decolonization. I'm pretty sure some of those terms, if you played the trivia game, once again, playing the trivia games help. So we, we, we have these in every, most if not all streams, so they will help. Um, so you probably see some familiar names or events or concepts. And then we're going to talk about other trends like pol um, economics or migrations. And also, if you see the big, oops, sorry, if you see from experts other than your teachers. So once again, practice SEQ, big green button. You should, you should be on your screen. So, decolonization. I think I think in, uh, once again we have a poll, and I asked how much do you think you know about decolonization, and five of you guys voted like that's a word. Yeah, <laughs> it is the word. But unlike most, because there are a couple of history terms that are like confusing, like um, proselytization. I don't pronounce it, but um, basically, like you want to look at the root word of the words so you see colonization decolonization so colonization means like you're you're acquiring territories from like overseas like you know um Brit Brit britain took control of america or the french took control of india i'm um, india vietnam so decolonization basically means it literally D means like, you know, you undo something. So it's the end of colonization across the globe. This happens after World War II or even during the, or after the Cold War where everyone's just done because they realize, because remember who's fighting here? The allies, the Axis powers. And where did they get all these war materials? Where did they get all the resources? Where did they get the, re, um, where did they get all these raw, raw materials? It's from the colonies. So India, let's say, let's say Britain gets their supplies from India and other colonies. So let's say India, India's like, I'm done. You're, you're exploiting, you're basically exploiting us. Africa's like, you're being, you're exploiting us. Like they're done. So decolonization, once again, just basically means like you're ending it. You're ending imperialism. You're ending the old school, like, oh, the more colonies you get, the, the better I am. The more, the closer I am to become a global superpower, it's over. So looking at the chat, they're talking about um, you guys talk about happy or hip. That's usually um, that's how that's why you use for source analysis. And we're gonna do a little practice for that later. So once again, decolonization. You're undoing centuries, decades of imperialism. You're undoing colonialism. <laughs> You're bad, right? This uh, there isn't. So um, I, I also had a, I also had like this. I had a stream yesterday in practice, and Nisa, Nisa is just very good at, like analogies. Okay. Colonies declare. Also, if you guys have, also if you guys are have a question, just put the ask the question bar so I can directly address it. Otherwise, you can just chill out in the chat. So, colonies declare independence. Once again, they're done. Bad breakup time. They're out. They're done. So they want to start their own nations, and usually they're being powered by like nationalism. Like um, they get that patriotism. Like we got to get rid of these pe these colonizers. You know um and it's either peaceful or violent so if you did the trivia um you know um some of them um are peaceful some they're violent as in you know some of them led to the loss of lives casualties injuries some of them were like hey you're just negotiating your independence like they're pretty kind of you india was peaceful yes <laughs> thanks to gandhi just call it it but the next slide is like gandhi <laughs> okay so first Let's just talk about India, because India is actually a common example, but it's a good one to use if you want to stay safe in your LEQ, DBQ, SAQ, short, yeah. So, what happened in India? Britain promised independence in World War I, because, remember, World War I, it's, a, it's like the first global war, like, the, not first global, the first, like, great, the great war to end all empire. So, they were promised, like, oh, you know, we're broke. Um, we we spend a lot of money um, trying to like fight like fight um, the central powers. So just we just broke. We can't sustain you guys. So they did promise that, but interwar years, 
in the rise of Hitler, more conflicts overseas, like it goes in the back of the, the, the priority list. So it didn't happen at, even after World War II. So Indians were like, oh, we got to do something. This is where it's not only Mahatma Gandhi, by the way. So he didn't carry the entire squad, the entire country. He was a leader of the Indian National Congress, which is usually, you know, you see this as a pattern later on too. Usually there's, it's like a group. It's not just, a, it's either a person, but it, he's part of a group that um, sets in stone like a path to independence. So here we have the Indian National Congress where they keep, they keep negotiating, they keep asking the British, they send letters, they send, um, they, they correspond with British leaders. Like we want, an independent nation, we're done. Like, you don't have the right to be here. You're not welcome here. So, um, we see that with the nonviolence movements. And one, if you want to specify one, a good example, it's a self march where, um, where I think they ban, um, let's see, they ban, um, because they don't, they don't let like, like saw to be like harvested. So like Gandhi just like walks so like with this great this like handful of salt with like all his followers to to protest like the we call it unconstitutional here, but like the like the the absurdity of this this rule. And once again, I think you guys mentioned earlier, yeah, <laughs> the March. <laughs> March 19, yeah. But it is symbolic. It's symbolic of their resistance. It's like how the Cold War, like the Berlin Wall is a symbol. So going back, um, India had the peaceful independence. So they're done. Harsh taxes to Saudi. Yeah, thank you for the correction. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I should have, I should have. Uh, yeah. So solve monopoly. Peaceful independence by 1947. Now, that the story doesn't stop there. So in India, there are minor. So there, you know, in, even in even in everywhere, there's there are minority groups, there are majority groups. So here in India, the, the majority groups are the Hindus. So we're talking about religion here, like religious religious beliefs. Even today, religion shapes man's culture. So so India had like the majority of in Hindus and the minority of Muslims, and that's once again, that's where you get that's where you get the Jin Ali um, Muhammad Ali Jina, and like how Gandhi had the Indian National Congress backing him up, Muhammad Ali Jina had the Muslim League backing him up. They want, they basically want, um, oops, yeah, they basically want like a separate Muslim state because they're afraid, and not not really afraid, they're just um, worried that, you know. But you know the majority always has the power, even in, you know, in Congress or in any political bo legislative body. They had the power. They had the more. They had the power to like pass the rules that they want to pass. So knowing how culture plays a role, that's how um, they they were like, oh, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna go our way. We're gonna get the short end of the stick. So let's split up. Let's um. Let's um let's have a separate Muslim state. So that's why Pakistan was created. That's why um um that's what that that, that that mentioned. Yeah, they didn't want Hindus in control. So this is where you get the partition of Indian Indian Pakistan. If you look at the map, green is Pakistan. So um you'll see um you took a chunk out of India, and it led it led it led to mass my um eventually yes Bangladesh. So we will see that also in the globalization era later on. But the main idea, like the first partition here was like in um, India and Pakistan. So you see in the map here, like it's not, it's not just, um, it's not just hap um, happy. It's not just like all rainbows and po um, unicorns. So there were Hindus living in the Pakistan, Pakistan area. Um, yeah, 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 I can. So the Hindus, there are all Hindus living in the Pakistan, like the Pakistan like region, like now that you see in the map. There are also Muslims living in India. So that led to mass migrations between both sides. And so all these families had to leave their like homes, like their lives behind just to get to this like separate, these separate states. Um, and we'll talk again, talk about it again later. So uh, now we had South Asia. Now we're moving to Africa. So 
it wasn't really uniform. Africa is a huge continent, so things uh, things ended in one of two ways. I mentioned earlier, peaceful or violent. So let's start with violent, just to get out of the way, because um, you know I like peace and all. I'm pacifist. So Kenya. So if you did the trivia, you, you probably came up in one of the questions. Um, you know, once again, you don't need to know specific countries here. You just need to know a general idea. I mean, you're probably knowing one of one or two examples are good for both sides. So, yeah. So, Namama movement. Um, so, this leader, Jomo Kenyatta, he's one of those like staunch nationalists. Like, we want to get rid of those um, Europeans as soon as possible. So, so um, usually, you know, history, revolution. Revolution comes in two, one of two ways. Either it's a, it's a peaceful revolution where they just um, protest civil disobedience once again in India, or it goes like violently, just kill like the locals, the local soldiers, the local officers over there, the local officials over there, like as a, sim as a symbol. So the Mama movement did that and thousands were killed. So that's um, one of the instances. It's gonna be a pattern here. So Algeria, it's another 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 thing that came up on the trivia. Um, it's it's all it's it was it was occupied by the French, and here they use guerrilla warfare. Usually, um, you probably heard that term, but guerrilla warfare usually is when you have less you have less people in numbers. Yeah, Algerian independence. It's a it was a violent independence movement. So guerrilla warfare basically it's like usually it's effective if you have less people. And you know you're familiar with the location, um, so the Algerians had that advantage. They know, they know it more. They know it more than the, you know it more than the the, the French who occupied it, who were, were switched out. They were rotated. Um, they were rotated in and out. Um, they know it more, so they were able to like use like ambushes, camouflage. Okay, uh, what caused, um, going to the chat real quick, what caused these movements and events turn violent? Usually, once again, I mentioned, it's usually, um, not usually, just, um, yes, um, staunch, staunch nationalism, they're, they're just, like, so done. Because if you're a local, you see your, your country being exploited during the war, you're like, because it's not just, like, it's not just, like, you know, especially in World War II, it's not just, Soldiers being there, like, oh, you know, we're just gonna borrow your land. We're gonna fight. No, they even usually take even take a took advantage of the locals. They like abuse them. They um, even like you know the rape, pillage, like you know what you see in a war. So um, you're they're just they're just done with that. And either that or they usually there's usually like a trigger event that um, just starts the entire chain. So let's say there's like an incident and then just, and there's like an incident, let's say like these, this Algerian or um, Kenyan and like a European guy, European guy fighting. And then it just, um, they just use it as a, um, but then it, and then things escalate. So, you know, something you're gonna use as a scapegoat or a justification to just start, you know, you turn to violence because if, um, violence is usually the, easier unfortunately it's like the easier way out you know because y your voice will be heard when you're like it's too late and yeah all right nigeria now i had an asterisk there because there was a revolution there was um there was independence there but i want to focus on like separate after, after the revolution after the in like after nigeria became independent congressman yeah Nigeria became independent. They had like a separate separatist movement. So separate, they want to be like, so within Nigeria, there's like civil conflict. So you need to know the exact name, but it'd be good if you, um, if you're, if you're memorizing. So it's called the Biaf Biafra secessionist movement, where, um, I think, um, part of the Nigerians were, um, yeah, civil war, um, part like, one side of the Nigerian, like the the the, the country, um, used like were like saying like, oh, these these this other side of the Nigerians were um were were committing crimes against other ethnic groups. So these once again they use it as justification to like separate to fight to um you know just wage conflict just to fulfill like you know ulterior motives. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, Portugal. Now, Portugal, um, not Portugal, Angola. So the Angola was controlled by the Portuguese. By the way, um, don't forget, like, because I know, like, when I when I took this, when I when I was on your on your on your shoes, I was like, wait, how did Portugal or like France or Britain like took control of the, these these places? Don't forget, it's, it was the scramble for Africa like centuries ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just naming like a couple examples here. So I'm not naming all the examples here. So, um, so if you want to do some extra Berlin conference, yes, Scramble for Africa. If you want to do some extra learning, like you want to read more about these, um, feel free to. So the Angolans first tried to like be similar to like the Indians or um, the Ghanans, which will go over in the nonviolent side, but. Um, when Portugal sent troops, they like suppressed them with like violence. So Angolans will realize like, oh, well, I guess if I, I guess fight uh, fight violence with violence. So um, similar thing happened in Angola. And this is also another um, vacuum. Um, no, another vacuum. It's another like continuity. Usually, when there's a revolution and doesn't end like smoothly, usually there's a power vacuum. And power vacuums usually are like red flags for like dictatorships because everyone everything's everything's in like chaotic everything everything's in chaos so everything's in chaos so <laughs> i love my power vacuums everything's in chaos so so some people are like trying to they're gonna try to rally people behind and go like oh I, I'll, I'll fix this like as soon as possible like i'll do i'll use absolute force they love the word absolute force so um that's it that's a pattern too okay what's scrambled for africa you mentioned around the era of the slave trade so the slave trade technically i would generally like the time um i would i would put it like the 1450 so like during like the age of exploration era, like Christopher Columbus, like um, Vasco da Gama, like that era, until until like the 1750s, like before the Industrial Revolution, or kind of kind of along those like almost like pretty close time, um, pretty close time frames. But so the scramble for Africa is around. Um, it's actually like shortly after that. So it it, it is around the, it's around like closely to the end of the slave trade. So there we go, going back. Nonviolent. So I think I only have like two or three, um, two or three examples here. Um, because unfortunately people, more people really resorted to violence. Oh, sorry, do you guys, um, can you hear me? Just making sure, just say yeah or, Okay, got it. So Ghana, it's one of those, um, I think it's in the trivia, but Kwame Nkrumah probably botched it. Um, Nonviolence usually um, either negotiate their independence or they like, um, they do some correspondence. Like they're like a couple like deal behind, under, behind the door, um, like behind the scenes deals and, um, or, or, um, your, the European nation involved, so like either Britain just didn't have any resources to like control maintain control over the region. So these let's say like you let's say um yeah because the the better way if you just if you if you're um if you're like out of money or capital just just let go you like peacefully just let him let him be rather than just risk losing more troops more money more like prestige and because. Even if Britain was like already defeated, kind of defeated, like they're done, like in terms of like global popularity, they still had like like some little face left. So, so there's there's Ghana from the British, and once again boycotting civil disobedience. There was some strategies. Protesting fall with protesting fall under violent nonviolent. It would fall. Well, protesting in itself falls under nonviolent. But if that if things turn like um, it like things three sixty turns to like a massacre or a bloodbath, well that that that's where it starts turning violent. So usually it depends on how usually it depends on how Europeans react here. They turn nasty. Usually how the European or the, the colonizers react. 
that's where it, um, that's where it, that's where we get to determine what it's violent, nonviolent. Yeah. French West Africa and um, its namesake West Africa. So the French actually were like, for some reason, they were notorious and ruling harshly in Africa. Um, so, so people usually, uh, once again, you need a catalyst. So this is where you see protests. And thankfully, um, they started once again, because remember World War II, they were liberated, uh, not liberated, they were first invaded, they fell, and they were eventually liberated. So while they were while they were recuperating, um, they they just just they didn't just let them go easily. They were like, oh, you know, I'll just have like you indirect rule. So they just have like local. I'll let you have your basically saying like I'll have your local rulers do that. Um, do the ruling, and then you you just report to us. And then eventually, once they realize, oh yeah, um, you're doing fine. And remember. Um, there's the Woodrow Wilson's 14 points and was, um, mentioned after World War One. it mentioned like self-determination that the fact that European colonizers will let them go once they see that they're fit, like they're, they're ready to rule on their own. So Tiananmen Square. Okay. Um, you're set. So you guys are very, very engaging. So let's do this real quick. True or false? Like just put the number in the true or false. So I don't know if you can um, speed run that. Okay, one is one is false. Two is true. Yep. Three is false. Nisa said it's false. Yep, it's not a Muslim league. And false is true. True. Yep. Y'all nailed it. Y'all nailed it. <laughs> yeah, you're all ready. Okay, moving on. Vietnam. Mm, Ho Chi Minh. So, so if you remember, um, you know, well, yeah, we're gonna learn more about, like the Vietnam War. So this was actually a civil war between. Like the they call it the nationalists and the commun and, the, and like because um some argue they call it uh, nationalists and the communists and eventually it ends up with, ends up with the communists rising. It's one of those some um, going back to the Cold War. Um, this was like the, one of those proxy wars. Remember proxy wars between um so other than Vietnam and Korea, so it's usually one of the two. North and South Vietnam War, yes. Um, North, North. I think one of them was led by Ho Chi Minh, Minh and the other was led by Ngon Diem. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but basically, eventually, the the communists win. And what? Once again, usually when you you win a war, like it's not, it's not like you immediately like gain their loyalty. So, you know, you still have to use force. You have to use you have to use you you have to, you have to threaten people like in your families so just so you can you can have to obey you so you have to use violence to consolidate your rule and once again Vietnam War yep it's just a, it's just a breakdown the uh, communist versus nationalists so technically we are talking about decolonization we're talking about how Vietnam like gained their independence from the French, which it's not through the civil war. This is just what happens afterwards. But basically the French try to come back and they they just, they just repel it. It's like it's like what happened in Cambodia, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, mm. um, once again, so French Indochina, it's not actually just one, it's not just Vietnam. It's like a it's like a region on the Southeast Asia. And also, uh, yeah, in Southeast Asia. So part of it is, was Vietnam, part of it was Cambodia. So, yes, Indonesia. Um, Indonesia is a weird word. Y'all funny. Okay, um, France fails to retake Cambodia in World War II. Once again, same pattern with, with Vietnam. Same pattern with West Africa. Like, they're just done. Um, they, I mean, they're like, they're, they're just done in terms of like, military might, um, 
influence, power. Like people are just like being nationalist and being patriotic. And just like want to get get them out. So remember what happens during civil war? Not a civil war, but um, usually when there's like you know you just dispose stuff. Not dispose is a strong word. You um, got rid of the old leaders. So it's um there's a power vacuum because imagine you're under their rule for hundreds of years and now they're gone like so no what so we have we have a power vacuum and this is where authoritarian leaders fight for power and there's and it's like the flow chart there's a chaos there's fighting 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 eventually though communists actually thrive in like chaos kind of it's like you know you know going back to their um Ideology says so like we gotta overthrow the the bourgeoisie. I don't know if I pronounce that right, but you gotta overthrow the upper class, the wealthy. So that's where you see the you see the yeah Pol Pot. So he's one of the leaders of the Khmer Rouge, which is the Communist Party. So I had this misconception before that Khmer Rouge is like a group. It's like a terrorist group. No, it's never a terrorist group. It's it's like a Communist Party. It's like a CCP or the the Red Party in Russia, CCP in China. So it's named after Khmer Empire. Mm, history. Yep. Going back to going back to like history before like the age of colonies colonialism. So so Pol Pot um actually forced like collectivation of our agriculture and farms, which is similar to um our neighbor from 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 its north, Russia and even china in in a sense so that's where you see collect collectivization and, and like china and russia if you if you if you're against the policies if you're you're dissenting you're dead like the guy in the picture also that's just a reenactment of so basically that guy who i'm slaying you guys throat is part of the Khmer rouge and i would say that the guy being killed is the dissenter so um tanya a random question will rasputin that sign nicholas be on ap exam probably more in ap euro so um there's higher chances in ap euro than ap world but you never know but yeah i would see i would say it's more an ap euro question going east no going west israel so we did once again trivia um so world war ii what happened in Germany? The Holocaust, and so it just perpetuated. It just continued this vicious cycle of anti-Semitism, and the Israelis is kind of the same tide as, um, like, nationalist tide as as everyone else. So, Jew Jewish diasporic community. So diaspora means like they're they're like away from their homeland. So imagine. Um, if you're an American and like there's like a group of you in France, you can call yourself a dias diasporic community. So it's like a basically like an expat, expat, something like that. So at some point they're just done and just want to demand their own nation. They didn't want like we didn't want a separate Jewish nation. And it's this movement is called the Zionist movement or Zionism, basically, where they just demanded, like, we want our own separate nation. If India, I mean, no, if Pakistan was able to do it, then why not us, right? So we got European support and UN supported it. So if you look at the map, you see, um, you see the, let me see, it's the ones in the orange. Um, you see that's Israel. And if you think, if you look at it, it's like a weird, that's I wouldn't call it a country. <laughs> if it, I would do a country, it'd be like a it's like it's like as a whole, like the border. But that's like that's like carved out. That's like you're you're taking up space from the it's like it's like Pakistan Pakistan, which is yeah, it looks um really contorted. But so this I mean not but but this is how this is why the Arabs are mad. Because this is like why you're why? Um one why, like two, that's like that's like a a normal reaction when you like you lose territory like Palestine not Pal yeah Palestinians who are in this Israel area their Israel region or like what we're just we're, we're just chilling here what are you doing um and so that leads to conflicts they're not happy so Palestinians once again are Arabs 
Israelis are Jews. So once again, culture plays a role, religion plays a role. So they're not happy. Conflicts. You still see conflicts up to this day. You know, if you see news like the, the, the occupation, like years ago, the occupation of the Gaza Strip, West Bank, there's still back and forth conflict between the two. And you also see the Yom Kippur War, where, and the Six Day War, where they just invade each, each other because they're like, demand, like, why are you not opening this like trade passageway for us? Or the other side's like, why are you taking our land? You know, they're just done. They just keep, they just keep fighting. It, and uh, uh, even uh, anytime sooner, I don't think we'll see um we'll see a compromise. I mean, there was like truces, but there's not an actual compromise. Um, let's see. An equal territory distribution also contributing to economy. Yes, that's actually the number and one of the top reasons. Not only in not only in religious um religious reasons, but also the territory. Once again, it's like a natural reaction. It's like how let's say you have a bag full of candy. And you have a younger brother, so your mom takes candy from your young from you, and it gives you a younger brother. You're like, why? It's my candy, you know. You just um, you, you you get that feeling, you get resentment. It's not fair for me. Like, why are you taking from me? Why are you giving it to him? You know, it's the same idea, same analogy for land. All right, we're back to another test of your knowledge. Find a kami. So there's six options out of the ones we talked about earlier. So. There's more than one, so find a kami. <laughs> All right, I just wait for everyone to at least answer. So, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Last call. <laughs> What's the question? Yeah, find a which one's which one's the communist country? All right. So, yep, y'all agree it's Cambodia and under Pol Pot and um, Vietnam or Ho Chi Minh. All right, so that's an overview of decolonization. I know I haven't talked about China, so I might do a quick answer in that. Um, well, technically, China counts under decolonization, but it, was, it wasn't really um, the only part you would count under decolonization would be China being like all of those anti Japanese rebellions during, and no, not during, ap shortly after World War II. And then once again, it all goes back to Mao Zedong. Um, so wait, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you know, attribute back to Mao Zedong, right? Saying the Chinese, the Chinese Civil War, the nationalists and the communists, and then the communists um, were, were were fleeing the, the nationalists, anti-Japanese sentiment. Yes, Yang Kang, anti jap um, the communists fleeing the nationalists. There's a long march, and then eventually the um. They clap back, they win, and Mao Zedong rises to power. And then this is where we always see the, the great leap forward, like the same idea, collectivization of agriculture. But it's more like Cold War era. So if you want to do a recap on that, we also have like a stream of the Cold War. So, oh, you guys talking about the unicorn question in the chat. Impossible point, yeah. Okay, so yeah. My mistake. So governments guide the economic life too during the decolonization because once again you just became independent. So if you didn't, if no one did anything, it would be chaotic. Like what are we gonna do? So are we just gonna let things be? And they don't even, they don't even, they don't even. Oh yeah, next week, cold war. Oh yeah, with Mr. Beckman's, which is in the chat right now. Um, they don't want to repeat the same, the same mistakes, the same government styles before. So they try to make changes the changes they wanted to do so in india you need once again you need to um just just look at the general trend here with that's how ap world works so you need to um tribute works for evidence so india the nationalized banks the nationalized insurance and coal the coal and in, in industries like coal so so this means that businesses need permission to do anything. Like the state has control over these industries. So, um, so, so that's how India tried to change for the better. In Egypt, the Suez Canal was nationalized during the Cold War. That's why the U.S. and the U um, Europeans were mad, and Israel was mad because why are you taking control of, our, of the canal we all use? That's unfair. And 
Um, Gamal Abdel Nasser, who was the ruler of Egypt at this time, he he promoted the growth of the middle class. So you're you're seeing a pat the trend here of so remember the social hierarchy triangle thingy. So they're they're helping bring up, they're bolstering the middle, the 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 less fortunate classes, the less privileged classes. They're giving them equal playing field. And they broke large estates. So that means that your 20, um, your 20, um, your 20 mansions will only be like one mansion now because we'll distribute the rest, the rest of the 19 to everyone else. Um, just some uh not not really obscure, but um this is a random example from Tanzania, Tanzania. Um, they did modernize. So you'll see this too as a pattern, decolonization, globalization, they start to modern modernize. Um from they're 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 getting rid of like the old style of like business, industry, government. They're trying to like change the ways, trying to model the West, follow the follow the West. This is where you see universal education, literacy. They realize that um we need more educated people, you know, to make better choices, to <clears throat> vote the right leaders. So um you see that too. And we see Sri Lanka, they had like nationalized industries as well, same to India, same to Egypt. And they decreased the wealth gap, like Egypt. So what do you all have in common? They all were like friendly. All of them are friendly to the people. All of them are friendly to the majority. It's not just because it's old school, you know. Only the the wealth, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That was the premise of the that was the premise of the world before the industrial revolution. That's why the the middle class came to existence. They all help grow the middle. They all help grow the middle class. Thanks, Nessa. So, this is the key word. Like uh, this is the key similarity you want to say when it's when you um. So key word like, like governments guide the economic like guide 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 means they're helping helping something pr to prosper. Nissan's fire. <laughs> okay, mass migration. So we briefly touched upon a few of them earlier. So the world is becoming more and more interconnected. Not not like today, but still. World War One, World War Two, the Cold War helped decolonization even. Help everyone become more interconnected, so people are more inclined to move elsewhere for opportunities. So this is where we see the mass migrations. In first of all, the reasons that the what reasons would be like to escape from political economic crisis at home. So let's say Russian. There, there were Russian. There were Russian refugees trying to escape. Like think of like the Cold War, like East Germany, what East Germany, West Germany, East German. East Germans were trying to escape to the West side because they realized, oh, capitalism works. So East, the, um, they, um, Russia had to build like build the, the Berlin Wall because they realized, oh, oh no, um, why are they doing this? So do you want to escape from the crisis at home? Cambodia, we know, we know some Cambodian um, immigrants here. We know some, we know some Viet, uh, Vietnamese who want to, to flee from this from the Vietnam War, so there's that. Um, to name a couple, and they're typically from people from former colonies to colonizers. <laughs> Eastern end of road, mm -hmm. Yang Kang. Um, no, um, former colonies to colonizers. So I think in a, some trivia questions, um, the ones that are now because I know some of them are weirdly worded, but um. That's why you see the Filipinos to the U.S. or you see the the not the Dutch to them. Let's see, I'm trying to remember this. Um, even like groups like the Jewish to Israel from like all these separate diaspora communities. So here's some examples. Once again, South Asians to Britain. So we see um once again transformer colonies to colonizers. So. South Asians to Britain, so Indians to Britain, Filipinos to the U.S. Um, quite an obscure fact, but Phil the Philippines is one of those um, American colonies before that that um, the U.S. had before World War One. So it was the um, it was the Philippines, Cuba, Puerto Rico. 
Algerians to France. Once again, Algeria was a French colony before the um before before it was it was independent. Jews to Israel. Once again, they they finally um, fulfilled their Zionist like um Zionist dreams. So they moved in Samoa too. Yep, they tend to be more industrialized. Yeah, if you think about it, because um, you just started your economy, so don't expect it to be like as advanced as the, the colonizer. So once again, they run towards opportunities. So they want like you know they want money, financial success, um, success, just just success in life. That is social welfare. So Muslim Muslims to Pakistan, Hindus to India. So this is the one of the um, deadliest ones. Like millions die along the way. It's not because like, I mean, part of it is because like they were fighting. On, it's not because it's not just like a street brawl. Everyone's fighting each other in the streets, but it's because of like the, like the distances too that they had to travel. If you look at the map, it sure looks pretty. Oh, well, pretty close. What do you mean? But you know, they were just um, they were they had to they had to bring their families. They had to leave everything behind. So their stable job or um. Whatever, whatever the remnants of that they had to leave behind, just to avoid being discriminated, and and um, yeah, being um, ostracized. So yeah, once again, overpopulation. I mean, starvation, um, too. Okay, so that's mass mass migrations. We went over governments guiding economic, um, guiding the economies, economy. They say commies. Okay, economies of newly independent states. Now we have nonviolent political change. This is just a broad like overview. So I'm just gonna name a couple examples. Some they're really um really familiar. So Nelson Mandela, South Africa. So post um I think Dutch um like after the Nether uh after after South Africa was independent from the Netherlands, there was this rule called apartheid, which means that thank you Renamite. Apartheid means that basically segregation. It's like how um, this is before the civil rights movement in America, segregation in schools, in jobs, in labor, in in everything, even in politics. There's segregation between blacks and whites. So Nelson Mandela stood up against that, and he was one of those beacons of nonviolence and political change. L.K. Jr. Now, this isn't really decolonization, but in this era, we see more openness, we see more liberalism, we see more like ears, like listening to like everyone wanting change. Part of Cecil Rhodes, mm, you know, like trivia. Um, versus black segregation, same idea as apartheid. You know, gotta be, gotta, gotta enact change. So apartheid, once again, it's a, it's like the South African term for like segregation in jobs, in labor, in schools, in in I was naming a couple of examples earlier. I was on the roll in public places, mm -hmm, racial segregation, and um, to a certain extent, white supremacy too. But it's like more of a charge word. But that is part of that is true. So lastly, Mohandas Gandhi versus Britain. So this is more back going back to decolonization. So um, going back to like, we want to be independent, like that original stance. And just in general, protest, uh, civil disobedient um, protesters against colonizers in Africa, like what's your name earlier, Brit, um, Gold Coast, um, I mean, Ghana, um, all, the, uh, all, those, uh, all those places. Probably in change over time. So it's one of those skills that you want to know in AP world. So. What continued? Social structure. So technically the status quo wasn't changed. You just kicked out the guys at the top, but not all decolonized states were able to like do a complete reform. It's just like, oh, hey, we're on the top now. I guess there's new people on the bottom. Yeah, it kind of continued. Um, social structure and like cultural, um, not social, but like traditions continued, religions continued. So, um, yeah, Hinduism continued. India, Israel had, um, not Israel, but 
you know, Africans practice their same either must um either they call this um Islam or Christianity. They still practice the same the same religions. However, there's a lot of changes. Power dynamics. Once again, power dynamics are talking about in the general world as a as a as a world. Like you know, remember Cold War? I mean, before the Cold, before the World Wars, it was Europe. It kind of a U.S. Post during the Cold War, U.S. Soviet Union. After the Cold War decolonization, it's just like there's some um, barely see superpowers. I mean, we obviously it's still like the U.S. and like Soviet Union still, but local states have more like um, what's the term? They have more supervision. They have more control on the over these lands over their, their local state other than just being like puppets puppet leaders or yeah because it's super after world war ii so mm -hmm. i'm sorry um i think yeah new political boundaries africa he, africa before was just like just a couple slices like if it, it was a pie it was just like a couple slices probably like 10 to 15 slices or 25 but it kind of doubled because we see more conflict you know we see them it started the same first but we see ethnic conflicts we see like oh you ruled because remember before before europeans came to africa there were like tribal tensions and when when um, europeans came to scramble africa berlin conference like they were like redefined so none of they're gone they're kind of going back to Kind of the modern day versions of, um, yeah, yes, Yankang. Remember, Israel, um, Israel and Palestine, Palestine continues, um, hit, um, India and Pakistan continues, you know, like there's still like friction between those sides. Tensions between ethnic groups, even today, there's still genocides in like Rwanda, if you have heard of it, or ethnic cleansing within Myanmar. So there's still like, just because of the, the common enemy, so like, you know that concept, your enemy's my enemy? Yeah, but what happens now if our enemy is gone? We're back, to en we're back to being enemies. So can't help it. So there's still, there's still local conflict and civil wars and tend to be ethnic groups. So real quick, we're gonna practice some, um, it's a mix actually. So it's an, what's the time in the SAQ from 20, I think it's 17. So I'll have you guys read the passage and then answer one A and one B. In the chat, just um, once again, just identify an example of. Actually, you can choose not to read it, but um, if you're if you're that confident, but <laughs> if you want a refresher, go for it. Try to um I know there's like some obvious examples outside of outside of this stream, but try to use like the ones we just went over today, tonight. No worries, yeah. Um just looking for practice um. So an example for Cambodia, yes. That's actually what we're going for, yeah. Government, yes. Cam Tiananmen Square Massacre, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So you already said China, you already said Cambodia. Tyler said Britain. I think I think it talked about B. So yes, I'll explain as him. Because Britain, once again, it's like it's like the decolonization. It's not it wasn't the policies were inconsistent in every place so serbian massacre cambodia yes 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 y'all killing it so usually it's in africa so remember the, how we said like in angola the portuguese crushed the rebellions like and then what things went or ari it's something along those lines it's like um you can argue any of the european countries um Try to crush rebellions in Africa and even Asia to maintain the status quo. Yes, 
Holocaust, yes, that's one of the examples. Like Holocaust, Great Purge, Great Leap Forward. Yes, so um Salem Witch Trials. Um let's see. And it, um oh yeah, you gotta focus uh not the focus, but you gotta look at the time period it says. It says 20th century, so um so Salem Witch Trials um would be it would it, it would be a right answer, but it'd be like early or way early. Russia under Stalin's Stalin's rule. So Let's see what do you say. Rwanda genocide, Rwanda mass massacre, uh 20th and yes, you can yeah, it started nineteen um late nineteen hundreds. So all right, you will kill a bit. So let's look at the document here. I'll have you read it real quick. And actually, because the prompt is I'll just have you guys like do like the easiest, like either do hip, hap, or but just only do one of the four for hip. So I'll go back to the Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Ottoman Empire. Um, talking about the Armenian genocide. Yes, it works. Yang Kang. So, looking back here, you try to find out either the historical context or the audience or the purpose or the POV. Let's see. Um, to get those DBQ skills polished. So you don't have to name all of them. Just name one. Like either what's happening, what's going, no, what's going on. Who is the the, the memoir address for? Or what's the purpose, or in, what's the POV of these guys? Yep, today's people reading a publication. Yeah. Um, that's even, that's even today, that's how I, that's how I just say it. Like, it's today's people who are reading this. That's audience, yeah. I'll take that. Let's see. Let's add like 30 more seconds. 20, 30, let's keep the labor. Mm-hmm. Related, related to yes, purpose related to yes, yes, POV or purpose, they kind of overlap. Oh, by the way, when you're doing the hip, happy, cap, like, is there a cap? But hip, hip, happy, happy, there's, there can be overlaps between like two of the components. So yes, French or Occupy Nigeria, that's the context. Um, nationalism, yeah, they promote nationalism. You see, like, they, they, they're, they're bombers. And they explain the motivation between LG and French. Yes. I don't know. Hippo, my teacher said that O means outside information. So I guess um, POV would be um, woman. You know, the title says women freedom fighters. You can say that if you take it literally, but you can take it more broadly nationalists in Algeria. Justify why there is no great putting bombs in public places yet. Um, yeah, once again, there's no one single answer here. Now that's really, 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 really bonkers, but there's no really, there's no wrong answer here. Um, as long as you can argue it excellently, you're good, yeah. Okay, so I think we're good for that. Let's look at one last, I think it's the last document. Yeah, it's the last document. So this is same place, Algeria. So, but this is actually not what it seems to be, just like in some little context. So we don't know if Algerians resisted the decolonization of the French, but this barricade, like you see that little banner there, it's meant to protect a French neighborhood. Um, you're like, why? They're enemies. Because this gener general, like if you look, if you can see the name, Masu, he was a French general who fought in for independence. He's one of those like, He's not, he's not a traitor to the French, but he's like, he's more sympathetic towards the, those fixes are beautiful, yeah, oh well. So, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, he resisted, he resisted, he wasn't, he was like different from everyone, every other French dude who was like, you know what, let's keep suppressing them. It says Vivian Massau, he opposed Algerian independence, yes. Mm hmm So, let's go to good old multiple choice question. The image shown best supports which of the following statements. Yes, yeah, soldier protect his home. But just, you just focus at the just focus at the actually um yeah just focus at like imagine not seeing the just imagine not seeing the context like imagine I didn't say anything 
just look at the, what what the what the rubble means. The rubble, like, yep. Um, process elimination. Um, it would not be dictatorships. Didn't say anything in the picture. Um, and it's not always a dictatorship. Think of India. It's an exception. African decolonization was different. No, it's pretty much the same. You see, they're violent and nonviolent. Remember, um, quality independent. Yes, violence and confrontations. The fact that this general is resisting the the the, the majority opinion, like he 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 wants he's fighting for independence for these people, and the fact that he's fighting like it's not just like a mental or like a written like a fight on words. It's like it's like how to use force. You see this? Not that info for C. Once again, not that info. That's a bad red flag. So he's brave. Yes, he's brave. So you see the rubble. So it's not something you can just talk or have a tea party on. Yeah, it goes against A. Yeah. So yeah, A and B are polar opposites. So nice. Um, yep, this is the last one. This is just addition. This just goes, this is like an add-on. So um, to the one we did earlier, um, like identify but it's more of a name like specific yeah answer one part only you don't have to, you don't have to answer all of them but it'd be good if we see answers from two a b and c a is mm, good try kenya yeah that, that's the thing though yeah um don't get thrown up by the because kenya actually is one of those um it's the mom mom movement it's one of the violent ones so it would actually be it would actually be um yeah mind it would be an answer yeah two c is different strategy yes india i stand um same strategy yes sunny that's a strategy but oh yeah you can say um it's a movement so i was thinking more of a country so or a nation so i would say um actually no 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 sorry 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 correction yeah i was thinking i was thinking the peaceful one so yeah kenya is correct kenya is correct sorry <laughs> Kenya works. Kenya works. So B, um, outside of the region that used the same tragedy of violence, you have Vietnam, the ghetto walls. You can argue. You can argue. Just, just to keep adding on. Vietnam works. Um, also, yeah, Kenya works for 2A. 2C, um, different strategy. So think of peaceful outside. So India. I think I think that's the only one. No, no, no. There's another one. There's like a couple. Yeah. The, the best best thing that pops up here is india so you guys are good no questions no oh wait sorry let me look at your answer again tanya i mean what do you mean when you um oh let's see pakistan and bangladesh um technically I, I would stick with india for like a more solid answer because when you when readers see india you can see you think of gandhi and like if you think of pa pakistan itself but like separation actually it works too yeah if you keep if you keep explaining yeah it will work it'll work you're right tanya all right any further questions final questions no if not thank you guys if you want to keep continuing the debate on dbqs laqs saqs just keep on <laughs> keeping doing that on the chat but thank you guys you guys did good um i'll email the i mean the replay for this stream will come here soon. They're all free. They're all downloadable. Tomorrow, game of fives, trivia match. If you want to beat Goku, drag him down, you know, someone got to overthrow him. So thank you guys once again. Two of them. Thank you guys. I love, I love, I love you guys. You're real being active. Man, you killed the game. Stand fiveable. Fiveable. Hopefully get it, we got a TikTok soon. <laughs> All right. I guess that's adios. Thank you guys. See ya. Let's see. Bye bye.